So could you please start off by just stating your name? Uh, my name is Merle Walsh. Uh, I live in Port Treverton. I've lived in Port Treverton all my life. I graduated from Susquehanna in 55. Uh, I uh, love to boast that uh, I have, uh, I think, around 12, 13 aunts, uncles, and cousins who uh, attended Susquehanna, plus two of my sons and two of my grandsons and a granddaughter-in-law who are Susquehanna graduates. And uh, I like to jump from there into my grandfather, who uh, in his wisdom sent uh, four sons to Susquehanna. Uh, two of them became medical doctors. Uh, one became a postmaster. Uh, another became a uh, high school teacher. Um, and uh, two of his daughters he put through nursing school. So, uh, and he, he did that all on the uh, income from this store, which he, uh, he owned. There's a little story behind the store. Uh, my grandfather uh, was a, what was called a hair pounder on the Pennsylvania Canal, which was still in existence when he was a boy. And it was his job to ride the mules that walked along the towpath with a rope connected to the canal boat and pulled it up and down the, the canal. And uh, there is a story where uh, they uh, got to New York. Yeah, the system went to New York by way of the uh, Chesapeake Bay. And they got to New York and the dam, they had a storm and the dam was breached. The canal was breached. And uh, him and another boy walked from New York following the towpath home to Port Treverton. Um, in his uh, younger days, he taught school. And uh, then he had the opportunity to rent the store. A gentleman built the store and uh, stocked it and suddenly became ill and passed away very quickly. Uh, my grandfather and uh, another associate uh, bought the merchandise and he began uh, conducting a country store in 1904 and uh, they remained in business till 1975. And as I say, uh, he, he did very well. He was a very, it was an honest man. I, I loved the guy. And as a boy, I helped stock shelves in, in, in that store. The uh, next uh, picture, should I be holding this? Yeah, you can hold it up. Yeah. yeah. The next picture here is a picture of the, what was called the Chapman Band. Uh, there was two bands. This one was uh, the one that's most popular. Uh, one of the band members in there is my great-grandfather, and another one is my grandfather. And uh, it is, uh, what's unusual also, is I own the cymbals of this band and also a drum from this band. And uh, it's, it's just, just neat, yeah. neat to, to be, able, be able to say that. And uh, the names are here, and I, I remember, remember some of the names. But uh, this, is, this is probably back in the early 1920s, or maybe before, before 1920. Uh, you stop me whenever we've, we've gotten so far. I, I, I'd like to uh, go with this one. This is... Uh, uh, the church which I attended from the, uh, the, uh, the graveyard, looking north, and picture isn't too clear, but this is my grandfather's store. This building here is the first house built in this area in 
around 1752. And it was my grandfather's family that built it. It was the Herald, H-E-R-R-O-L-D. And uh, the store, of course, is missing. This barn I now own. This barn is uh, was put together with wooden pegs. It was before nails. So it, it dates back to probably the late 1700s, which is unique. Again, this was a dirt road. It was dirt until 1923 when they first built a concrete road. Then, of course, in 1949, they shifted and built a three-lane highway over the old canal bed. So, uh, so when you travel north and south here on 11 and 15, in most places, you are traveling over the old Pennsylvania Canal. It was filled in, and uh, as a boy, uh, us kids would uh, skate because the canal was still there, and there was a, a couple feet of water still in that canal. So in the wintertime, we'd skate on that canal, which was... Uh, a, a, lot, a lot of fun. Uh, I'd like to br bring this up. This is uh, the uh, discharge papers for my wife's great-great-grandfather who uh, fought in the Civil War. And uh, I, I came by his, uh, his uh, discharge papers from, from the, the war, the Great War. Uh, I'll just keep pulling things yeah, out. You're good for a this is the ferry from Port Treverton across the river to Herndon. And it seems unusual to have a, a ferry in the Susquehanna River, but this was a ferry. And uh, they, they had a lot of business because uh, if you go back before 1923, when they first built the the solid concrete road, south of Sealands Grove was rock face out to the river. And you could not go from Port Treverton to Sealands Grove. You had to go back around and make a long detour to get to Sealands Grove. So the people, the workers in Port Treverton rather than take all that time, 45 minutes or an hour to get to Sealands Grove, they could take a ferry across the river to Herndon, which was very active in, in sawmilling. So most of the guys would work over there. And they had this ferry to take them back and forth morning and evening. Now what happened in the wintertime? Wintertime, in most, most of the time in those days, the river froze over solid. So what they would do, they would take steel posts, pound them in the river, and link a rope all the way across the river. Because lots of times in the morning it's really foggy. So the guys would walk to work, back and forth. And they had the rope so they wouldn't get lost going to and from from work. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, is one of the ferries from Port Treverton to, to Herndon. So, um, we're running a little long time, so I'll just do a last few questions. Okay, go. Um, so, why did, what is the main reason why you decided to bring all of these artifacts to the event today? I'm 82. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get uh, my, uh, I have four son, three sons. I'm trying to get a couple of my sons interested in, in giving them this. Uh, but uh, I don't know if that'll be possible, and I, I want this material preserved. That's the important thing. Legacy, not, not my personal legacy, but legacy, legacy, legacy of the history of, of this area. I've lived here all my life, and I, I, I'm, I'm in love with the area, and uh, Susquehanna is by far the best the best place to do it. I, I really ad admire whoever started it, whether it was Mr. Ake or, or uh, whoever it was, 
that started this program. I think I think it's a tremendously valuable program. And uh, as I say, this is maybe a fourth of what I have. Uh, and uh, I would like to meet uh, later on uh, with uh, with other people and uh, and have this stuff uh, digitized. So so that it's. Uh, it stays viable for years and years. Okay. And just lastly, how did you hear about the History Harvest event? By the newspaper. Okay. Uh, and uh, you were good there uh, because it, it appeared, uh, not the same article, but uh, a related article, I think, I think three or four times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I was good. But I was, uh, when I arrived here, I was very much disappointed because I thought I'd be standing in line. Uh, Wait, waiting to uh, to find uh, my interviewers, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. Uh, there's certainly there's certainly the material out there in in mm -hmm. in, the, in the in the town and uh, in down our way in, in Port Trevorton. So I was I was surprised that there weren't more people here. Mm 